<laughs> we should take fingerprints. Uh, um, the chill sun inside of the bottle. We'll break down into enough little fragments to put one on every square mile of beach in the entire world. That's actually one square mile of beach. This is him giving a short presentation at TED.com, which is a technology education and entertainment and design. It's a technological conference, mostly for Plastics are also hard to recycle. 
A teacher told me how to express the under 5% of total plastics recovered in our... This is the recovery of plastics uh, for the United States. The creation of plastics and how much is recovered in recycling. Waste stream. It's diddly point squat. That's the percentage we recycle. That's slang for nothing. Now, melting point has a lot to do with this. Plastic is not purified by the remelting process like glass and metal. It has a very low, low boiling point. But other things would burn off toxins. So if we chose glass, when you purify glass, you would remove a lot of these oil based toxins. But when you choose plastic, you cannot burn off higher uh, levels of gases and toxins, and they build up in the plastic. It begins to melt below the boiling point of water and does not drive off oily contaminants, for which it is a sponge. Half of each year's 100 billion pounds of thermoplastic pellets will be made into fast track trash. A large, unruly fraction of our trash will flow down rivers to the sea. Here is the accumulation at Bayona Creek next to the LA airport, and here is the flotsam near California State University Long Beach and the desop plant we visited yesterday. In spite of deposit fees, much of this trash leading out to the sea will be plastic beverage bottles. We use two million of them in the United States every five minutes. Here imaged by TED presenter Chris Jordan, who artfully documents mass consumption and zooms in for more detail. Here is a remote island repository for bottles off the coast of Baja California. Isla San Roque is an uninhabited bird rookery off Baja's sparsely populated central coast. Notice that the bottles here have caps on them. Bottles made of polyethylene terephthalate PET will sink in seawater and not make it this far from civilization. Also, the caps are produced in separate factories from a different plastic, polypropylene. They will float in seawater, but unfortunately do not get recycled under the bottle bills. Let's trace the journey of the millions of caps that make it to sea solo. After a year, the ones from Japan are heading straight across the Pacific, while ours get caught in the California current and first head down to the latitude of Cabo San Lucas. After 10 years, a lot of the Japanese caps are in what we call the Eastern Garbage Patch, while ours litter the Philippines. After 20 years, we see emerging the debris accumulation zone of the North Pacific Gyre. It so happens that millions of albatross nesting on Kure and Midway Atolls in the Northwest Hawaiian Islands National Monument forage here and scavenge whatever they can find for regurgitation to their chicks. A four month old Laysan albatross chick died with this in its stomach. One small bird had all of this in its stomach. Here's a, a hybrid issue. These birds are being fed by their mother plastic and they're dying. So whole species of big seabirds are very endangered now because of choices of making plastic 50 years ago. Plastic is only 50 years old. Hundreds of thousands a bird of the goose is dead. chicks are dying. It's full. The stomach's full of bottle caps and other rubbish, like cigarette lighters. Cigarette lighters, caps. But mostly bottle caps. Sadly, their parents mistake bottle caps for food tossing about in the ocean surface. The retainer rings for the caps also have consequences for aquatic animals. This is Mae West, still alive at a zookeeper's home in New Orleans. I wanted to see what my hometown of Long Beach was contributing to the problem, so on Coastal Cleanup Day in 2005, I went to the Long Beach Peninsula at the east end of our Long Beach. We cleaned up the swaths of beach shown. I offered five cents each for bottle caps. I got plenty of takers. Here are the 1,100 bottle caps they collected. I thought I would spend 20 bucks that day. I ended up spending nearly 60. I separated them by color and put them on display the next Earth Day at Cabrillo Marine Aquarium in San Pedro. Governor Schwarzenegger and his wife Maria stopped by to discuss the display. In spite of my Gurdy Man hat, crocheted from plastic shopping bags, they shook my hand. <laughs> I showed him and Maria a zooplankton trawl from the gyre north of Hawaii with more plastic than plankton. Here's what our trawl samples from the plastic soup our ocean has become look like. Trawling a zooplankton net on the surface for a mile produces samples like this and this. 
Now, when the debris washes up on the beaches of Hawaii, it looks like this. It's the beach of Hawaii. And this particular beach is Kailua Beach, the beach where our president and his family vacationed before moving to Washington. Now, how do we analyze samples uh, like this one that contain more plastic than plankton? We sort the plastic fragments into different size classes from five millimeters to one third of a millimeter. Small bits of plastic concentrate persistent organic pollutants up to a million times their levels in the surrounding seawater. We wanted to see if the most common fish in the deep ocean at the base of the food chain was ingesting these poison pills. We did hundreds of necropsies, and over a third had polluted plastic fragments in their stomachs. The ra random sample of this fish, one third of them had a lot of plastic in their stomachs. One of them holder, only two and a half inches long, had 84, 84 pieces, of, pieces of plastic. Now, you can buy certified organic produce, but no fishmonger on earth can sell you a certified organic wild-caught fish. This is the legacy we are leaving to future generations. The throwaway society cannot be contained. It has gone global. We simply cannot store and maintain or recycle all our stuff. We have to throw it away. Now, the market can do a lot for us, but it can't fix the natural system in the ocean we've broken. All the king's horses and all the king's men will never gather up all the plastic and put the ocean back together again. On a happier note, there are plastics that are made that naturally biodegrade, but those are not chosen by industry right now. The technology exists to make plastic that fits the environment, but we have a regime of choices from the past and political technology, political politics and technologies that make profit making them, and until we refine and change those, we will continue to do this, and it will damage us, it will damage the general life of birds, remove birds and you remove a huge ability to uh, check other ecological balances, uh, so you have a huge issue from this plastic that was created 50 years ago only, which is now a major international problem. The levels are increasing, the amount of packaging is increasing, the throwaway concept of living is proliferating, and it's showing up in the ocean. He offers no hope of cleaning it up. Straining the ocean for plastic would be beyond the budget of any country and it might kill untold amounts of sea life in the process. The solution, Moore says, is to stop the plastic at its source. Stop it on land before it falls into the ocean. There's a natural t-shirt shopping bag, and in a plastic-wrapped and packaged world, he doesn't hold out much hope for that either. This is Brian Rooney for Nightline in Long Beach, California. There's a quote from one of my professors. He says, one thing that you learn from environmental sociology is it's not an environmental problem. It's a social problem that has environmental effects. And that's the way we'll look at this when we meet next time. I did not talk much about macro theories, but I have other PowerPoints uh, which we will look at macro theories about the environment and our connections. These would be macro theories that would substitute a Marxist view uh, of history as well as culture and politics. So stay tuned, see you in two weeks. If you haven't signed the attendance sheet, please sign the attendance sheet and I'll give you credit for attendance. Any comments, questions, emotions, shocking is it? How many of you heard of the plastic in the oceans before? How many of you heard of that? Nobody's heard of that. Well good. Now, now you have. Okay. And this is the way it works. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I could continue, but you're, you're free to go uh, anytime you want. And we just have an hour every two weeks. So, so thank you, and I will put some digital files on the Koopman Cyber Campus website if you would like a few things related to today. All right, thanks.